come sit here. Okay, wow. A great way to make do things. Or maybe we should face the other way. Jeepers, you're heavy. You could both feed on it. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Okay, so I've been seeing these questions a lot. And instead of telling everyone our story, I thought I'd make just one video and um, that way I can share it with everyone. So I don't know if it'll work for everybody, but for us, um, this is the best way to go. Yeah, it was pretty easy. So people say that my bird only loves me and hates everyone else in the family, will attack them, um, and they don't know what to do. So we all want to be a big flock together, don't we? Yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe the problem usually is that um, they see you as a mate rather than just a flock member. Uh, so they're very protective over you. And um, the best way to do it is always to share the social interactions with everyone in the family equally. Or maybe to begin with, you know, more with the people who they don't like. So uh, with us, when she came here for the first time, I mean, she was terrified, so she just clung to me. I was the first person here and she was just attached to me. For the first two weeks, um, she was always on me, would not get off, always wanted to be with me. I mean, everything around here is brand new. So she was, you know, scared. She didn't know what was what. And she assumed, well, I have to trust someone. I have to, you know, stick to someone. Um, and she was just hoping that she could trust me. Yeah. Uh, but with my husband, she would dive bomb him. She would attack him. Uh, if he'd walk past, she'd, you know, strike at him like a cobra. She would chase him around just to attack him and all that kind of thing. Uh, she would bite him very, very hard around the neck and everything. I mean, she's never bitten my face or anything. My hands, yeah, maybe if, you know, she's not happy, but never my face. And it was um, scary, yeah, that she would bite, bite his neck and face and things like that. Uh, so what I did was I tried to ignore her a bit. Um, if she'd land on me, I'd try and take her off if, as, as soon as I could. If I couldn't do that, then I'll just, you know, ignore her no attention, don't play with her, make myself seem super boring while my husband is over there playing with toys and he's got all the treats and you know trying to entice her come here and play with me you know uh, so that was helpful um, the next best thing and this is this was a great thing to do was um, I would leave for a few hours a day and they would spend the time doing stick target training uh, if you don't know what that is, bird tricks are the best trainers in the world for birds and the first step is always target training with like a chopstick, a clicker and some treats um, and that way it builds trust, it creates a positive fun experience um, and they would do that for maybe an hour or two a day, they would spend that time together. So. In the beginning, she would be screaming for me and she'd be like, where is Nancy? Where's Nancy? And um, because she probably didn't want to be alone, um, she thought, well, I might as well try and befriend this other person that's in the house since they're being so nice. And the target training really helped, you know, they would do their little thing together and she'd get excited. Of course, she would get treats for that. So that's always a huge motivator. But, um, yeah, try and keep the social interactions. You know, some people say, well, he attacks my husband, so I always keep him with me. I always have to take him off my husband or away from other people and keep him with me, keep him with me, which creates even stronger bond between you. So you have to sort of let them, <laughs> keep them away and say, no, I'm not interesting, I'm boring, and this other person is exciting. Uh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say, um, oh, also the triggers to stop them becoming your mate and to create a flock mentality. So only, she's not going to let me, she keeps her head being touched. <laughs> only head scratches. You never want to touch the body, stroke the body, pat the body or anything like that anywhere else. Head scratches only. Um, in the wild, each bird can groom each other's head. I mean, the pin feathers, they can't reach them, so another bird will do that. 
Whereas the mate, this is important, the mate is the only one who can touch the rest of the body on the bird. So that's, what are you doing? Are you being silly? Are you being hormonal? Is that hormonal? It actually looks like her jealousy um, behavior. When I'm talking to someone else, she's like, give me your attention, you're my best friend, and ignore this other person. You're being silly, you wanna come here? Oh, it's scary when you're like that. Yeah, but you've had enough seeds. So you're not a fatty boom sticks. You want more? Okay, you can have more. I mean, I didn't give her much seed yesterday. I usually give her just a couple to get her into a bed cage because she doesn't really like it. So I try and create that a positive experience and just put a few sunflower seeds in a few of her favorite toys and she's happy to go in there and look for them. And I'll lock the door. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Um, what else? I mean, 12 hours sleep is always good to, oh, sorry. No, we lost that. 12 hours sleep um, is good to reduce hormonal behaviors. Uh, so they don't think it's springtime uh, in, the, in the breeding season. There's more sunshine during the days. But if you limit that um, always to 12 hours, that reduces that. Also, huts or nests or anything like that, that creates um, hormonal triggers. So that'll make them even more hormonal or aggressive towards others. So we're just trying to avoid all that kind of thing, right? No warm, mushy foods. Um, because the mate and the parents and the babies, they regurgitate for each other. Um, so that's another mating behavior as well. So if you're trying to avoid warm, mushy foods, um, that's another trigger as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'd like to, to be interactive with a lot of other people and visitors and things like that, which is a bit trickier because they don't spend very long here. Um, and if you're worried about target training, if the bird's going to attack you, I know that um, I've tried having her target trained by someone else. And instead of going for her favorite treat, she bit the finger. Didn't care about the treat, which is unusual for her. But um, So you want to either use something else to give it to her or just hold it really far away and slowly inch it closer to where they can only just reach the seed and not your fingers. You can also do the stick and target training through the bars of the cage. Um, if you're worried so you can start that way first until they understand how to do it and what it's about and know that they can trust you yeah but like I said bird tricks bird tricks on YouTube they are the best they're the best watch as many of those videos as you can um, and they will teach you exactly how to do it the right way I mean there's a few little rules that may um, disrupt the the training and make it a bit weird so <clears throat> yeah you need to do it right you need to do it right um i guess we can show one of those videos one day we can have it go ourselves yeah okay that's enough that's enough of the seeds <laughs> all right we finished the story you don't need any more you don't need any more okay you want to come here step up so yeah i mean there's a lot of benefits for stick and target training i mean if you Start off with the training and then you put your hand closer for them to have to step onto your hand to reach the target. That's a great way to teach them step up. Yeah. Yeah. And you never really want to force them to do anything because um, that just makes them more scared of the whole thing. You want to make it everything positive and food is usually a great motivator. A lot of people say their birds are not really motivated by food. So um, I wonder if that's because they would keep seeds in the cage all day and their favorite treats they can get whenever they want so why would they try and work hard for it <laughs> there you go <laughs> good girl um so yeah i don't give her seeds all the time i mean it's just mainly for the video so i can keep her here with me um but yeah otherwise i use them for training or if i want her to be somewhere and she just won't do it or go into her cage or when I leave for a little while I might give her a few seeds just to keep her occupied and keep her happy. But apart from that, no, we just don't give them away for free, do we? Good God. Thank you. She kisses to me. <gasps> okay. Alright, that's enough. Alright. Say goodbye to the camera. Say bye guys. I'm scared. I'm scared of the big tripod, right? <laughs> It's okay. Okay, we're being silly now. Getting distracted. 
because you're just so cute and so funny and so silly. And you squeak like a little teddy bear. You do. You do. All right, guys. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait. Be a good girl. No.